Oh look, it's two WRXs. And one is the one no one liked until Baby Driver came out. Now it's everyone's favorite, right? Uh-oh, looks like it snowed an inch there. Hope you can pull out of that lot because Impreza's are lower than Uber's hygiene standards. What? Are you regular car reviews? What are you, get, why are you even in Canada? Get out of here. 10 bits ripped off Dunkin' Donuts. You're watching Throttle House, and I'm James. And I'm Thomas. And we actually bought this 2006 Hawkeye WRX for 5,000 bucks. It was the cleanest running WRX that we could find that didn't have as much rust as the Titanic. Yep, and we brought along the most expensive WRX you can buy right now before hitting the STI range. This is a special edition, the Ryu. I'll be honest, we got lucky with this one. Finding an all-stock WRX from this era is hard, and couple that with one that has very minimal amounts of rust and you're talking impossible. In fact, we jumped on this buy so quickly that James drove his Miata in a snowstorm on summer tires to see it and FaceTimed me in so I could inspect it. Turns out it was a solid buy. So if you're in the market for one of these, you'll need to watch out for head gasket leaks, subframe rot, transmissions made of tissue paper, and a paint job that might as well have been done by a five-year-old. But if you can get past or fix all of that, you'll have a fantastically fun, obviously turbocharged car with a smile-inducing all-wheel drive system. So, the WRX has been around forever, and honestly, it hasn't changed much. Therefore, today, we have an important question. Does the WRX need a special edition? And more importantly, how much does buying a new WRX give you over the old ones? That's what we want to find out today. Like its 2019 other trim siblings, the Ryu has a four-cylinder, two-liter boxer engine, pushing out 268 horsepower. But what makes it Ryu is that it gets some STI goodies. From the driver's seat, the biggest difference is that it gets the short shifter from the STI. And from the outside, once the vape smoke clears, you'll find STI spoilers all around, along with dark alloy wheels and black accents. All in all, it makes for a pretty different looking WRX. And, well, good, because you're paying for it. All right, the WRX Ryu. Ryu means thunderstorm. I have no idea what that has to do with WRXs, but it is a special edition WRX, and that makes it automatically cool in my books. All right, we have a mixture of snow and kind of wet tarmac, so we get to experience all parts of this car. This has a turbocharged flat four engine with a twin scroll turbo. They in 2015, they put a twin scroll turbo in the WRX and it really, really improved the drivability of these cars. That old WRX that James is in has quite a lot of turbo lag and that makes it cool in its own way. But in terms of everyday drivability, this car has it beat. Okay, the Hawkeye. Yes, and as Thomas said, we bought this and we didn't buy it because it's the fastest car. We didn't buy it because it's the coolest car. We bought it because it destroys Canadian winter. See, the thing about the WRX, and anyone who has a WRX will know this, it is not a car that you drive. It is a tool that you wield. All right all-wheel drive, it puts the power down. Subaru has what they call active torque vectoring, and it is quite literally not active torque vectoring. It is brake-based torque vectoring. So when a wheel starts to spin, it puts some brakes on it, and then allows power to go to the other wheel. The big problem here is that in the old generations, these WRXs had a limited slip differential in the rear. This one has an open differential. However, I can tell you that while it's not as good for doing like fun, drifty power slides, uh, you do you do really put the power down. It genuinely puts the power down in a predictable way. And Subaru's all-time all-wheel drive, it just feels different. It just feels different than other all-wheel drive systems. There's something kind of relentless about the way that it tractors through the snow. And that is the main reason you buy one of these cars. This has a legendary all-wheel drive system. And with the correct application of steering and throttle, this can dominate any surface. So both these cars have the same center differential. However, this one has an LSD in the back. So one point to the Hawkeye and zero to that stupid Ryu and it's stupid nice color that comes in. All right, the power delivery is nice and smooth. The big problem here though, is that all these new WRXs suffer from catastrophic mind-bending rev hang. And it is horrible. I don't know why 
it really needs to be there. It's obviously an emissions thing that has to do with this particular engine. But I can tell you that it is really, really, really annoying and it takes a lot of getting used to. You have to pause several seconds shifting from first to second. Watch, pulling, pulling onto a road now, you can hear the pause. Clutch in, clutch out. That's how long I have to wait for the revs to fall. It's annoying. However, you can tune that rev hangout, thankfully, uh, with an aftermarket tune. The problem with that that people are worried about is that is it gonna avoid their warranty? Maybe. So it's a choice you have to make. Personally, I'd take the risk. So how does this one differ to the one Thomas is in behind me? Well, unlike that one, which has moved to a two liter, this has still got a 2.5 liter engine, which pushes out 230 horsepower compared to his 268 horses. And yes, the horses in this may be a little bit more tired than the ones in that one, but they're not ready to be turned into glue just yet. This is also turbocharged like that one, and this hits peak torque at 3,600 RPM or so, whereas the Ryu hits it at like 2,000 RPM. All right, let's see how this does in a pool. Torque comes in, torque goes out. You can't explain that. However, when this came out in 2006, this could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in under six seconds. That probably, given my experience today, is no longer true. But the Ryu gets the short shifter from the STI. And that's an improvement because this feels a lot better than the stock WRX shifter. In fact, WRX shifters have always kind of been goopy and dopey. It's, they're not really very precise. And the transmissions themselves actually don't feel very good. <clears throat> Analogy I used a long time ago for the one that James is in is it's like sticking a broom handle into a basket of rocks. It doesn't actually feel that much different to this day. <laughs> So the torque delivery is very smooth off the line. 2000 RPM is your peak torque in this car. However, it has a very turbocharged torque curve. So after you get to 4000 RPM, it kind of flattens out and it doesn't feel like it keeps building to the red line. So you don't really feel like you want to run out the gears in these new WRXs, which is kind of a bummer. But the trade-off is that just kind of puttering around town, you have a lot of accessible torque. And because this is older technology, the boost does take a while to come on, but when it does, it does punch you. It's, it's charming in that when you put your foot down, nothing really happens. And it's kind of like, you know, pat on the head, well done for trying, but then it comes in and it feels good again. The clutch in this is very stiff. It's an, uh, forgive me if I look tired today, I've been using this clutch all day. In fact, Thomas won't tell you this, but he has to actually sit further forward to compensate for the lack of leg strength that he has. So there's a lesson for you, never skip leg day. Okay, the steering. Don't make me get old school. This thing's old school. This is hydraulic. I feel everything, even things I don't want to feel, like crippling loneliness. But also the steering is pretty, pretty accurate, pretty, pretty good. It's, like, it's held up really well. The suspension's a little bit soft, so the car does have some roll in the corners. But it feels great, and this, this car feels compact. It feels smaller than that Ryu. All right, some corners in the WRX. Now, the steering is good. I don't mind it at all. It's a little bit too light, but it is pretty precise. The front end feels good. There's not very much lean from the car. And the way that it kind of pushes through the corner is very all-wheel drive-like. These cars suffer from a little bit of understeer. If you do want to make one of these cars a little bit more aggressive to oversteer and rotate, toss a thicker rear sway bar in the end. But as stock, they're fine. They understeer a little bit, but it feels very planted, which is nice. So in terms of just cruising in the WRX, the ride is fine. It's actually, for the passenger, it feels a little bit stiffer, I've found, than it does for the driver. You feel pretty connected to the road. I don't mind it at all. The driving position is too high. The steering wheel telescopes and the seats are comfortable, but I feel like I'm way too high up, and that's kind of a bummer. I want to feel more connected to the car than I do. But in terms of just everyday livability, it really is a good daily. It's a really, really good daily. Okay, and it doesn't have a short shifter that the, the Ryus and the SDIs do. This is a five-speed gearbox. In fact, this generation back then came with a five-speed manual or a four-speed automatic. Now they come with CVTs. This is a characterful gearbox, I'll say that. Basically, it never wants to be in a high gear, and if you're crawling along in traffic, it doesn't want to be in second, but if you have any momentum at all, it won't let you in first. So you're going to get stuck in this purgatory between first and second, so... That's your life now. As far as ride is concerned, it's, it's, I'm surprised how livable this has been in the time that I've had it. I will say that noise on the highway is pretty bad. This hood scoop, as cool as it looks, 
picks up wind so badly. And I thought that the wind rushing over the hood scoop, I thought that sound would make me remind myself of how badass I am by having a hood scoop, but it doesn't really sound that good. But into cooler? All right, I'm gonna go meet James because I wanna drive that old WRX because I wanna find out how far we've come, if at all. I do like a good WRX. Yeah. I do. Uh, well, the good news is it hasn't changed in a while, so it it's really, really no surprises. Hasn't. These cars are weirdly similar. How's the short shift? Though? It's good, actually. It, yeah. it doesn't do away with the transmission issues that the I red, the rev hang's still there. The rev hang's definitely yeah. still there. Yes, absolutely. So how is this? It's a world rally blue is what it is. It is. This is the Hawkeye and it is my favorite. Is it? Um, I might get pooped on for saying that, but I like the Hawkeye the best. I like the Blob Eye. No, the Bug Eye. The Bug Eye is very cool. It it's, is my it's second charming. favorite. Blob Eye, I don't really like, but Whatever it is. Although these could this do is called the bit. Evo Eye because it looks like a Mitsubishi Evo in the front. It does. What happened to the Mitsubishi Evo? That's a great question. Yeah. Where is the Mitsubishi Evo? <laughs> um, anyway, these, this, are, these LEDs are sick. They are very good. And this is the Ryu, so it's got some extra stuff. SDI side skirts. This is the Ryu kind of thunder color. But these, these aren't stock wheels. These are not stock wheels. No, these are some winter wheels. So we've got some Michelin X sizes on there, as you should in the winter. And what else do we got that's Ryu specific? Well, the yeah. sills. The black the wing sills, mirror? The black wing mirrors, yes, the color and the short shifter. Other than that, it's just a special edition. It's not like they really massively changed there's, it. There's a hundred, right? A hundred of them, yes. In Canada. Right. Anyway, I think this is a very good looking car. It is, it looks good. These are both very good looking cars. I still want a refresh of this. And I, I want a I very much want a refresh of this, yes. Which is why this is kind of like the heart and soul of what a WRX is. It's funny how much the hood flexed when you slap it. It flexes like that. Like when you drive, it flexes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an old car. What do you expect? Every time you get in, it's an adventure. <laughs> Can we do the interior? Let's start with this. Yeah. We'll go from old to new. Okay, 2006 Hawkeye interior. It's, we're not going to spend too long talking about this because it's pretty basic. Yeah, there's not much to talk about, literally. Um, well, actually, sorry, not basic, classic. Cl sure. Classic. Okay, classic. All right. Three dials. Analog, Heated good. seats that still work? That's right. Look, they're, they, well, they work. They okay, work. this one's a bit sticky. They 2006 we Subaru don't, work. We don't ask questions. Okay, yeah. Maybe yeah. juice was spilled out at some point. This is not an infotainment. No. It is a radio. It's AM, FM radio <laughs> that half the time is... <laughs> which yep. is actually the soundtrack of the car now. Really? That's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Steering wheel. Actually, so if you were to buy a Bug Eye WRX, you'd get a Momo steering wheel with the four spokes. Some people like the Momo better. I like this better because it's three spoke and it's got the perforated leather. It's actually yes. really nice. I do miss having a heated steering wheel, getting out of nice cars and getting into this. <laughs> getting into this thing, yeah. That doesn't even have one. That's true. Doesn't even have okay. a heated steering wheel. So, well, 40, in terms of comparison. 40 grand, no heated steering wheel. That's, yeah. How are the seats? Uh, they are actually very comfortable. They're comfortable, right? They really are. Yeah, I actually had a 2006 Impreza and honestly the interior is exactly the same because this is just an Impreza with a turbocharger, basically. It's nice. It does everything it says on the box. It literally does. It's very basic. It gets the job done. Yeah. The materials are blah. The visually it's blah. But well, like if, whatever. If you didn't know this was a five speed, you still wouldn't know. Because it's completely worn out. Because it's completely worn. <laughs> Time for a new shift knob. Aftermarket. Again, classic. Um, <laughs> Anything else to talk about? This is a sunroof. There is a sunroof, and, yeah. it, and it works. It does. Yeah. I would. Buy, I'd be afraid to open it, lest it does not close again. No, I, I've opened it and I've closed it. So yeah. far. Yeah. I'm. <laughs> I am nuts. <laughs> living I, on the edge. It's nice that we can Mr. look at this. Mr. Engel's been living yeah. on the edge. It's nice that we can look at this all in one piece. Yeah. Before we rally it once and crash it into the first tree. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Maybe it'll be a live video. That'd be a sweet live video. I don't want to die live on YouTube. It would be, well, not death, but just like maybe maiming, <laughs> you know, like massive injuries. It would do really well. People yeah, would, I'm people sure would, my insurance would love people it. People would donate money. It would be nice. Yeah. 10 bucks if James breaks his arm. Okay. Uh, Ryu? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, okay. There's more leather in here. There's more leather. Oh my God. It's got the same heated seats buttons. No. <gasps> 13. How did you all notice that? I have no, well, I, I forgot, I didn't know 13 a years. 13. 13 years. Sirius Black was in Azkaban for less than that. Super, seriously. Does it, t I mean, they work. I, I don't see the reason Those not work. to. 
I, I mean, like the switches. Oh, like, you mean like why change it? Why change? But at the same time, well, I, I don't know why you change, change it. Them. Decades. Because <laughs> decades. Decades of yeah. Um, okay, steering wheel. I really do actually like. Uh, it's nice. It's comfortable. These Recaros are nice. The Recaros are very good, actually. Yeah. They're not too narrow. They're comfortable. They hold you in. Gauge cluster is good. The numbers are too small and close together, but you have a digital speed, so that's fine. Doesn't matter. Boost gauge. That's cool. Really cool. And it cool. changes really quickly. Like this is actually one of the most responsive digital screens it's on fun the to, market. It's fun to push it. It's weirdly fast. I can see you enjoying it. It's fun. I can just keep going all day. But yeah. no, that's actually a really cool screen. It's and really it, nice. And it's it responds clear. It's really very good. quickly. And it's LCD, right? Look at that. That's quick. That is very cool. Genuinely good. That's cool. And this is a leather trimmed, and that's that cool. That sounded pretty good just then. It did, actually. This is fine. It does things. It does things. It Short shifts though. Radio. Yeah, like, it's uh, it's it's way better. It honestly is way better than the stock one. Yeah. But, like, Subaru transmissions, I'm not Here's the love. thing. Here's the thing, because people have a problem with the value, when because this, this is two grand more for the special. But if you think about what you get, you get a short shifter, you get side sills, you get... Um, a cool paint color. A cool paint color. Yeah. Like a Porsche, a Porsche paint color, special paint color is like 13 grand, right? And if you wanted to wrap the car this color or a color similar. Even, even if you just bought aftermarket seals, it would cost two grand. It's true. Also, the biggest thing for me is that it's a special edition. I'm a, I'm a sucker for special editions. Are you? I actually am. And he's been raving about how he doesn't like the new Miata special edition that just came out, the 30th anniversary. I just I think, don't know why it's orange. I think it's cool. We needed I a blue one. one. We needed a blue one. I would own one. I think special editions are really, really neat. Straight up. Uh, so this interior is fine. It, it could use a refresh, obviously. Yeah. But it gets the job done. I like it. Okay. I'm excited now. Can I go drive the WRX? The old WRX? Don't you crash it. Well, I'm not going to crash it. What? Well, we're driving it on a road. We're going to take that thing on a rally course soon. I know. What are you going to say then? I just, your testosterone gets the better of you. Time attack driver. Pleb. Bye. All right. Back in the Hawkeye. I love these things. Yeah, so actually when we bought this car, uh, a few things needed to be done so that we could get a safety. Uh, we needed to do a CV axle, a little bit of brake work. Uh, the handbrake wasn't working. But it's okay. We had a master mechanic. But seriously though, we, we did work on the car together in the garage, it was lots of fun. The, the fun of working on an old car and owning an old car like this is what makes it cool for me. 5,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, that's a set of wheels for a new car. There is a check engine light on because we did a secondary air pump delete, as you should. But as far as I'm concerned, I read that as engine, check. Okay, there are you. Wow, that clutch is so much softer. Oh, that rev hang is so bad. Tune that out. Oh, that turbo spool sounds nice though. It's a bit more grisly in the Hawkeye. Immediately I feel more power. The short shift is really nice. I prefer that to the long throws on the normal WRX. And I like these Recaro seats. They are very comfortable. They fit me well. So this particular Subaru has done 243,000 kilometers, which is like over 150,000 miles. That's actually quite a lot. Um, and these cars do have some head gasket issues and a few things here and there. But to be honest, it's held up really well and it has somehow managed to get through Southern Ontario tuning culture unscathed. And unlike the new WRXs or that Ryu, this has no traction control or stability control. as any lock brakes, thankfully. but. It's definitely a much more pure driving experience. You actually have to drive this car. You have to pay attention. I like that. A little bit of danger. That's all you need. Sprinkle it on top. All right. The steering wheel's nice, D-shaped instead of the circular one in the Hawker. Jesus, that rev hang. Okay, taking it around the corners. Oh, the turbo sounds good. The steering is so much lighter. It feels more modern. I just have to get used to that. Feels good though, so planted. These cars do so well in the corners with that all wheel drive. Yeah, these short shifts are great. This is a great car. To me, this is an obvious graduation from the Hawkeye. This feels 13 years later, if you ignore the heated seats buttons, which I don't, that needs to change. I don't understand. That still is playing on my mind. That WRX that James is in now should probably have a tune done to it to get rid of the rev hang. You wouldn't have to do that to this because there is no rev hang. It's fantastic to drive. Yes, there's turbo lag. Yes, it's not as fast. The shifter kind of feels garbage, if I'm perfectly honest. But 
this is still a really raw, fun car to drive. You can feel the rally heritage. You understand why these cars do what they do. On a back road, this does understeer just like the new WRX. The steering feels better though. There's feedback. There's little bumps and pops in the steering. You can Hopefully you can see that, but you go over a bump and it kicks back a little bit. I miss stuff like that in new cars. You just don't get that in new ones. And it adds to the experience, the vibrations, the sound, everything about this car is fun to drive. Yeah, great car. But for $35,000 less, my Hawkeye still tracked us through winter just as well as I need it to. Although the alternator's making a funny sound and the power steering doesn't really come on in the first minute or two and the left CV axle boot might be leaking a little bit. But hey, five grand, you know, character. So usually at this point we decide which one is better, but we can't really do that today. Obviously, if you buy the old one, you'll spend time and money fixing it, and if you buy the new one, you'll just uh, spend money, period. But both are rewarding to drive in their own ways. So one thing we did take away from today is that 13 years apart, these cars are remarkably similar. So with that in mind, Subaru, we love what you've done, but give us something fresh. We'll be waiting.